What is up guys, a very good morning and welcome to a new daily market outlook for the dollar index, EU, GU and of course the other dollar pairs and gold. So with that said, let's dive in and see what the market is going to be providing us with today. So first of all, um, yeah, we can't really disregard it of course, is the major spike yesterday in the dollar index. Main influence for this was of course the inflation numbers that came out yesterday. Um, this was in favour of dollar bullishness which of course resulted in the DXY spiking up massively. Now, pretty much what we did see, of course, was a change of character over here on the daily time frame. So what I'm keeping my eyes out for is still a potential for the downside, um, but however, of course, keeping in number or keeping in mind um, that the numbers of yesterday do have a positive influence on the dollar overall. Now, looking at the four hour perspective, um, because this is where I kind of like major uh, or where my major interest lies, is that we are kind of stalling inside this area of supply. However, it is not really that significant of an area of supply, um, but it is kind of pretty much the only fresh one, hence why we didn't really stop on the way up until we arrived in towards this zone. So if the dollar index does not start pushing down from this zone, which I would preferably want to see, and then of course we'll start seeing a spike back down in towards here at least. However, with the four hour now being bearish and the daily heavily overextended, this um, could of course just be a reaction point providing that further push in towards this area of demand over here uh, for the dollar index. Looking at the daily once again, this is our high over here that we broke. So not that much of an overextension um, if we look at it from a break of structure perspective, but if we look at the overall impulsing towards the highs, then of course we do speak of that overextended nature. Now just moving back in towards the four hour, and just to add, after seeing a break of structure, pretty much the first tail sign of a potential daily pullback is of course that daily change of character. So that is still in my mind. Then next to that, of course, seeing a four hour break of structure, tapping towards either this supply, which is pretty much gonna be the 50% retracement on the daily, on the four hour, excuse me. Um, so if we just draw on that FIB, you'll clearly see that we pulled back in towards the 50% mark, stack with supply, so that potential downward push could come today in towards next week. However, if we do not see the reaction that we want from here and do not see that push in towards this lower area of demand, which will kind of see, of course, the four hour continuation, then I'll be keeping my eyes out for this highest area of four hour supply with this beautiful liquidity high. As we can clearly see, this wick tries to take out this wick over here. Um, so liquidity lies above the highs, beautiful supply zone, extreme of the overall, of the overall range. And from there, I will definitely be looking for those dollar shorts. So that's the dollar index. Let's head over to Aussie dollar because Aussie dollar did something really interesting yesterday. And I made a trade trade breakdown uh, on my Aussie dollar trade of yesterday. It's inside Discord, so links in description down below. But if we look at it from a daily perspective, of course, this that I did mention that we had that overextended move in towards the downside. After that, that descending corrective nature, which often does result in that spike um, in towards the highs. However, um, I am guilty, of course, of kind of yeah, talking myself into that bias because overall, if we just look at it from a mechanical perspective, and I didn't explain this, um, why I'm feeling guilty is because I didn't explain this properly in yesterday's video, I think, is that everything is bearish, right? So the daily is bearish from a swing perspective, but also from an internal perspective, what we're looking at, and of course I did explain this yesterday, but just wanna make it extra clear, is that the daily was bearish. So we had this push in towards downside, pullback, this is all the pullback, then push in towards downside, pullback, push in towards downside, pullback. Um, then what is pretty much the area of supply which broke this low? That was this supply zone over here, moved in towards that supply zone and dumped in towards the downside, pure supply and demand logic. Um, the only thing that I was keeping in mind, of course, is that every single time we break a low, we kind of like retrace straight away, meaning that the bearish intentions are kind of weak, but still uh, daily from a swing perspective is bearish and from an internal perspective is also bearish. So just keep that in mind, um, then looking at the four hour time frame. Pretty much no real kind of like bullish intentions in the sense that the market's just chopping up. Um, there's not really any kind of like commitment in towards the push down. So that is first of all, or third of all, also kind of like a till sign of potential for the downside. Now, what I was looking at yesterday is of course, we're in between the 786 and the 618 FIB. We have this area of supply um, pretty much. Uh, what we saw was what I was mentioning in this video. And of course I did very um, yeah, clearly explain that I was looking for that potential short. But what we clearly saw was a break of this change of character low. So what does that mean? 
kind of like what I just explained on the dollar index. That's kind of like the first tail sign. Okay, this four hour uptrend is now ready to uh, to switch, <laughs> excuse me, because of the fact that we broke this low, ready for a pullback, boom. And that's pretty much exactly what happened. We saw the push up, pull back, push up, boom, break of this low, pull back, dump. So pretty much, uh, yeah, structure just doing its thing. So now from a four hour perspective, I think everything is clear, right guys? Um, swing perspective, uh, everything is bearish. And then again, we saw the change of character, which was also bearish. So daily swing and internal bearish. Four hour swing and internal became bearish. Now 15 minute time frame, what we were looking at, at least what I was looking at was the swing structure, um, clear. We had this break of structure over here on the 15 minute. This is your swing high, this is your swing low. So then what do we look for? Because again, all time frames are now bearish, literally all time frames. So we have that push in towards the downside. We, where do we have liquidity, excuse me? We have liquidity over here, because this high tried to take out that high, fail to do so, meaning that there's a lot of liquidity above the highs. Then what happens? Push in towards the highs. So we have this big buy before the hard sell off, meaning that there's a lot of supply inside that buy. Now, initially I was looking for a sell on this entire um, or kind of like on this refined buy before the big sell-off. However, what I then saw was if I draw it in uh, like from a perspective, uh, perspective, excuse me, of the entire range, we have the buy and then the sell-off, price comes back in, then drops again. So also what we saw over here was the internal break of structure, right? So we see the push down, pull back, push down, pull back. So already um, from here, you could have taken that initial sell, but I personally didn't. I was just waiting because I wanted it to push in towards here. However, once I saw that this break of structure internally happened, then from that moment onwards, I was looking for the sell. Then clearly, um, this is your area of supply. Tap in towards supply, big sell off. Uh, and that's where I sold. Trade breakdown uh, in full is also in the Discord link in description down below. But from there, we started selling off. Uh, initial target was this 15 minute area of demand right below all the liquidity lows I never tapped into it hence it was my target i can kind of see we got that initial wick reaction but no real follow through um in towards the upside of course uh, a lot of follow through in towards the downside now looking at it from a four-hour perspective uh, where are we going to stop next well there's not really any clear area of demand um, of course we do have kind of like a lot of demand or hidden demand inside these wicks um, so yeah, potentially somewhere from here, we could start seeing a pullback, but it does look like uh, Yeah, Aussie dollar is ready to put in a new lower low very very soon So yeah, that is pretty much it from Aussie dollar um, looking for that further downside Now uh, of course if we do pull back then a potential skill in um, or continuation trade is going to be in play now euro dollar uh, Euro dollar of course also fell through big time um, after providing us with that change of character on the daily, uh, yeah, of course, after that you expect a pullback. Um, there was supply located over here, which I kind of didn't really notice, um, but it is there, of course, in these imbalance candles, these two over here. So that's pretty much what has been pushing price down. Now, looking at it from a four hour perspective, of course, it was very clear that we had this four hour area of supply. Then again, just kind of like this ascending choppy nature in towards the highs, boom, big sell off. Um, yeah pushed down in towards this four hour demand zone, which I noted yesterday. Now looking at it from a premium versus discount perspective, we have pulled back in towards discount pricing. So it is good to look for a long. There are two fresh zones, zone number one, zone number two. Um, so yeah, looking for a long from here or from here, kind of dependent on what the 15 minute or the one hour structure is gonna provide us with. Of course, thanks to that big sell off, there's not really a lot of structure to work with. So most likely I will wait for more development towards Monday. And kind of look uh, for something like this where after kind of like the big drop off you kind of want to see structure develop and then um, later in that run i'll be happy to get in not kind of at the start because otherwise you can just kind of like uh, yeah be catching tops um, or bottoms uh, mainly tops of course when we're buying and that's not what we want so as long as kind of like this supply flow uh, holds then i will not be looking for any longs at all um, of course, if this demand zone fills, I'll just be waiting for this lower one with these equal lows over here. And this is, of course, also the highest probability zone. And I'm happy to be more aggressive there because it is, of course, inside the extreme of the overall four hour swing range. So that is euro dollar. Now, pound dollar. So, pound dollar also dropped off. Uh, again, uh, pretty much demand flow, uh, which I had in yesterday's video, 
right? All these sell before the buys, sell before the buys, every single time we kind of wick back in. But then what happens, at a certain point, the demand flow is gonna fail. It failed, so we crashed in towards downside, of course, after a four hour break of structure, it's still risky to go long. Hence, I was not looking very actively for those longs. Uh, there was a potential long yesterday, which would have resulted in a break even trade for myself. Um, that was over here, because this was your swing high, this was your swing low, this was your demand zone inside pretty much the, the discount of the overall swing range. Pretty much also gonna be the 618 Fib. Um, so yeah, you could have looked of course uh, and seen that we got like a change of character kind of style over here where you get that push, push, push. Um, then you could have targeted this upper area of supply. Um, yeah, so yeah, if you, for example, had an entry over here, stop loss underneath the supply zone, or the demand zone, you would have hit like a one to one. But again, not the best of trades due to you kind of like looking for longs after the break of structure already. Whilst after break of structure, you of course expect to pull back. Of course, uh, you can take those trades, right? But just expect your win rate to be a little bit lower. Now we're coming into those discount prices and that's where the probability of taking longs is gonna be far and far higher. So either from this zone um, or from this zone, this is gonna be a very high probability zone thanks to the equal lows that we have over here. So I will be looking very actively for longs from there, um, but of course can already look for longs from here, but pretty much same as on Euro, USD, we need development. Uh, and then I'll be looking for those longs. For now, I'm just staying out, because otherwise you're just gonna be catching falling knives. At the moment, we can see that we're just reacting to this imbalance over here, where supply lies. So yeah, need kind of like some development before looking for any longs actively. So that is pound dollar, then Kiwi dollar, so Kiwi dollar uh, also fell off, of course, with the news. Looking at Kiwi dollar as a whole, from a daily perspective, just wanted to highlight that Kiwi dollar overall is bearish on the daily perspective. So of course, um, yeah, after seeing this break of structure over here from this low, this is now your swing high, this is now your swing low. Where towards do we expect a pullback to occur? We expect it to occur in towards the premium. Right? So for example, in towards this buy before the sell-off candle, which is still fresh. So that is also, of course, the most favorable uh, zone still, but it doesn't need to get hit, right? So we just need to read what price is doing and what the market is doing. And at the moment, the market is failing um, to close above that four hour uh, high, also the daily high. However, from a daily perspective, keep in mind, we have now seen a change of character, change in character, whatever you want to call it. So. That means that this pullback could be, again, the start of higher prices. We do have this fresh area of demand where we're now located in and situated in. So it's a big day for the dollar. I mean, I'm not really actively trading today uh, because of all the momentum on the dollar pairs. So I'll be waiting until Monday to get in. But if I do see some kind of like good reactions, uh, it could mean that like Kiwi dollar is going to start pushing up a euro dollar, pound dollar. Look, there are going to be a lot of trades uh, yeah, on our hands. So that's what I'm looking for from uh, NZD USD. Then also from a four hour perspective, you could start looking um, yeah, for longs kind of like inside these wicks. But again, nothing really that interesting on the four hour uh, in regards to clean demand. Also, if you look at it from a one hour perspective, still very choppy. Um, but yeah, we just need to kind of like see some structural development uh, occur, kind of like has happened in the past over here, where you get that big dump in towards the downside. Um, then for example, what happens, push, pull back, push, then once you see kind of like this demand flow come in, I'll be happy to kind of like take it on uh, the second uh, break of structure. So just wait for, for example, this to happen, and this is the first, so this could still kind of like just be liquidity grab and then for the downside continuation, but I'll be happy to kind of like take it on the second one and then I'll be actively looking for those buys um, as we saw in the past over here. So that's what I'm looking for pretty much on all the dollar pairs, but this will probably and most likely take until Monday. Last of all, gold, uh, XAO, USD. Yeah, we uh, yeah, pulled back yesterday, of course, after taking out these uh, yeah, pretty much a double top over here. Uh, liquidity got grabbed. Uh, yeah, just stalling inside kind of like the corrective uh, past price action over here. These wicks, that's what's pushing the price up again. Uh, happy to look for longs if we pull back down a little bit deeper. Uh, one more time and then I'll be looking for the long uh, after liquidating this low over here. So, and then trading it back up in towards 1900. 
So yeah, guys, that's it for today. A little bit of a long one again. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just make sure to join the Discord. Uh, yeah, link is in the description down below. Ask any questions you have. I am always there to help. And I wish you all a fantastic trading day, guys. Thank you.